I'm starting to play more with ice trains now. Um, and it's become very clear that I need to set the locos up properly. But how do I do this? Well, I need to have a section of track that's long enough to enable me to do a speed profile. So I've decided to build one. So here we go. So here is the speed test track in situ. I forgot that of course I need runoffs. So I've added an extra section of track left and right to the speed track because when it tests the speed between the center block, the left and the right, when the loco is running at high speeds, it needs that runoff space. So that's now added in. the cabling for the five blocks now. So that's the two runoffs, the left, the right and center. They are now connected to that 8GBM that I installed on the final baseboard to give me the measurements. Here we are in iTrain and I've created one long track run to represent the speed track. I'm using one square for 10 centimeters just for ease on here. So starting at the left, the runoff is 91, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that takes us to there. So what I need to do is add a feedback, add a direction arrow, and then add a block name. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Group those together, assign to group, click elsewhere, and G, that's the first one. From the right hand side, now let's do this here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because that's 86, let's call it 90. So that is the same. So we need to do the same again here. Let's put a, uh, a block in. Let's put a direction arrow in. Let's put a name in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Group those together. And then for the middle, we have three feedbacks. The one there. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Rotated it. Space. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we can do six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it's thirty, isn't it? So this this middle section is thirty centimeters. So I'll just put one there. It doesn't really matter. This is just me trying to make it pretty. Um, let's give it a a block. Let's give it an arrow. Let's pull that together as a block. So again, G, click elsewhere. All right, let's let's set these up. So on the left, I'm going to call it run off left. It is a occupancy block. It is 91 centimeters and it is on 11.4. Let's do the right one. We've got run off right and that one is 86 and it is on 11.5 for the middle ones so this is left actually if we think of if we think of of i train they call it one center two so let's just do that 100 centimeters and it is on 11.1 this is center, it is a occupancy, it is 33 centimeters and it is on 11.2 and this is two. The names will become clear in a moment. 100 and that's 11.3. So right, let's do the blocks. So run off left. It's free track, we've already got it. Just so we don't get any mess error messages, I'll set these as minus five. Autofill. I'll just do that again, I think, in a minute. We then have speed test, speed profile. It is free track. Stop position is minus five. You don't need that for this, but I don't want it coming up with, with an error message that I haven't set it up correctly. Um, oh, let's just make these bi-directional because we're going forwards and backwards. I just want to remove any possibility of any issues. Run off right, 86 bi-directional um, and just make that that's five that means how far from the edge of the track in each way will it stop right let's auto fill that one's auto filled this one auto fill this one auto fill that should be it just for good measure nothing to update of course apply save okay there is our track and you can see that I've actually got the, uh, the um, Prince of Wales P2 on there already. So let me just drag that on. There we go. We're in, we're on, it's there. Great. Now let's go and check the speed profile of the train. Going into the speed profiling, the speed measurement section of iTrain um, view, speed measurements loco you'll see we need to set the sensors that's why he names them one c and two so it's easy to select them one c and two and the rest is taken care of within the loco and i'm now actually using the manner class because i can adjust the cvs more easily if i read those from the track these are the defaults from the manufacturer and what i need to do is make sure that the top speed is correct so the first thing I'll do is remove the acceleration and deceleration. That is the delay the manufacturer puts in to make it more prototypical. So I'm gonna put that at zero, which means that iTrain is gonna control it completely. So let's write those settings, just read them back to make sure, yep, they're zero. Okay, so now we're on maximum acceleration and deceleration, done. Okay, so what we need to do now is in the speed measurement tab click it let's make sure we're going the right way so let's put the manner class on 
it's facing that way, it's in a forward gear, otherwise it has the tendency to shoot off in the wrong direction, which is really annoying. Top speed, let's hit start and see what it comes out with. And see what it comes out with. And back again, and back again. Okay, it's come up with a measurement of 74 and 78 in each direction, which is fine because the top speed of the Manor class is supposed to be 75 miles per hour. I can't do anything about the reverse. For some reason, all my locomotives are faster when they go backwards. Why? I don't know. Anyway, so let's now do a full speed test. Let's make sure we're in the right way. We're facing forwards. We're in forwards gear, so we're correctly oriented. Let me close that now. Yes. Okay. And what we'll do is we will start a speed test for the whole of the loco. There are 126 steps. We don't need to do them all. I actually find if you do them all, you get a really horrible line, and that'll be clear when we, when we finish this. So doing every five means we will do a speed profile check on every fifth speed step, and then we'll draw a nice straight line or curved line as opposed to a jiggly line. So let's start that and then we'll leave it running. Start that and then we'll leave it running. There we go. That is the speed test complete. So now I just have to click apply and it'll fill in the uh, values between. You'll, you'll notice this you know, nice smooth curve there, which is uh, much better than if you did every speed step because it would be all over the place. And the interesting thing is that you have to take this with a pinch of salt to an extent because you know this last one was clearly a lot slower. So I, 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 mean, I, I can go in and just that uh, well, I don't know what I'll adjust it to, actually, because the others are quite low. Um, maybe I'll just adjust that to one. No two readings will ever be the same, is what I can say. Um, I've done this many times, and every time the top speed's different. When we, test, when we tested this before we started, we had a top speed of just under 75. Now it's 79. If I go and adjust the top speed downwards, I guarantee it'll come out at 69. So... It is what it is. It's about making it as accurate as you can within reason. So that's now done. All that's left is to do this for all the other locos. Hope that was helpful.